Hey guys, it's Jeff. Last week, I made this hedgehog. Okay, okay, okay. I think yeah, it wasn't last week. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't last week. Um, some things came up. I had to grow a beard. A lot of other things that you don't care about. Um, but point is, it wasn't last week. It's now. So here we go. I made this hedgehog using a few of my favorite basic techniques in Tinkercad, like tilt deforming and ruler symmetry. Now this week we're stepping it up a notch and we're gonna be using some more advanced techniques by modeling a snail. And it would be a crime, I think, to model any other snail than the coolest snail in the world, Gary the Snail. Meow. Now this is another request from the kids at Willoughby Eastlake School of Innovation. I mean, they just got the best ideas so far. But if you're a teacher or you know a teacher, email me your ideas right now or comment below with requests from your students. And meow, here we go, Gary the Snail. Meow. So first let's get a good reference image for Gary the Snail. And there's a lot of good ones. I think I like this one. And we're gonna go to the All Shape Generator tab. And I think this is on 16. If you haven't gone through this list, you, you gotta go through it because there's lots of great stuff. This is the corneum. And as you can see, there's a little sketch here that we could kind of change the, uh, the cross section of it. So we're gonna make it round and then let's go, it goes around twice. There's two windings. So we'll change it to two and then see what we can do. Okay, that looks good to me. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna fill in the center spiral so that it has that different color that Gary has. And we're gonna do that with a cylinder and a sphere. And if you play around with the cylinder, it gets you pretty close to that spiral. Um, but as you can see, it's not, it's not perfect. And the reason is that there's a sort of a, a concave surface to the shell. So we're gonna get that concave surface by squishing down a, a sphere and cutting out that from the cylinder. And as you can see, that shape looks better. That spiral looks better. So since I like that, I'm gonna duplicate it, flip it, and then check on the colors of Gary. He's a, a maroon and a pink. I like the maroon better than the purple, so... Uh-oh, what's going on here? It's like I lost one. Let me see what I can do. I have to redo it a little bit. It still did it again. Let's just group it and see what happens. Okay, that's great. Okay, it's still taking a while to group, um, but once it does group, it'll turn to one color. If you want to get multicolor, click the color, and then hit multicolor. Now I'm gonna work on the, the shape of the shell. I need to squish it a little bit in one, one or two directions. And once I'm happy with that, I'm gonna move on to his purple dots. And we're just gonna use spheres for his purple dots. And we'll embed him into the shell just so the right amount sticks out. So let's do that. And again, it's always great to go back to your reference image to see the proportions and positions of each element. So you'll see me do that multiple times with this one. Okay, I'm happy with that. So the next thing we're gonna do is work on the bottom of the shell. There's kind of a little lip and we're gonna create that with another shape generator shape called the P-ring on page eight. Um, and again, there's lots of parameters we can adjust with it. 
So we're gonna see how we can make it work for us. Now let's move on to the slime. And this is kind of a tricky part, so just bear with me. We're gonna use the extrusion shape generator, shape. And what we're gonna do is, I'm just looking to create a nice curve. So just pay attention to the curve on the right, the bottom right, and that is gonna be the slime shape. So this will eventually be a hole, and I'm gonna cut this out of a big rectangle. And it's important to note that I'm not really looking at the right shape. I don't care what it looks like because I've scaled the shape on the left so that it gives me what I want. So once I'm happy with this shape, I'm going to duplicate it, mirror it, and then combine the two. And now I'll make the slime out of the rectangle. When I'm positioning the box, I just want to make sure that there's nothing outside of this hole that I'm creating. It just makes it a lot cleaner. See that corners that in, inside the hole, the other corners inside the hole, and I'll just the top and make it fall within the hole. Now there's this little bit that we need to cut away and we're just going to do that with a cylinder. We'll uh, rotate it, scale it, and stretch it so that it fits our contour and then combine it. Now I'm going to take a little time to get, again, the scale and position right. Make sure that the slime looks good in proportion to the shell and the length of the slime is correct as well. Now, as you'll notice, it's not round. There's no roundness to the edges, and we need that, I think. Now, if you were lazy, you would just cut out a round um, profile, and it would look like this, but that doesn't look good. That doesn't give us that, that edge, that forward edge, and we're not lazy. So we're going to do this the right way, and this is a trick I like to call the revolve. So we're gonna take the original slime shape and duplicate and then rotate it 10 degrees and then duplicate, duplicate, duplicate and it'll maintain that 10 degree relationship and it'll essentially be a revolve. So then we'll take our bottom shape and make sure that it makes that whole circle so everything is cut out. We're not going to worry about the edges. We'll take care of them later. Once you combine them all, you get a revolved shape that looks like this. And that's a great front and back to our slime. So I'm just gonna use a couple boxes now and get rid of all this little junk on the outside. Now we could just eyeball this, but we're gonna do it right. And we're gonna cut that front shape in half and then align it with the ruler to the front and back. And to make it all easier, we're gonna hide the shell. Just click on the shell, and then click the light bulb. Now it's a little easier to work. So to cut it in half with the ruler, we first want to line up the ruler to the red shape using the midpoint. And we want to line it up so that it's directly in the middle of that shape. Then we'll switch over to the box and switch use midpoint to use endpoint so that the middle of the red shape is in line with the endpoint of the box. 
that'll give us a perfectly cut red shape. We're going to use the ruler again to line this all up, but a little differently. So we're going to use the end point on one side. So if you see this green, we're going to make the same value as the length of it. So 21.53. And then on the other side, we're going to use the midpoint and set it to zero. So now it's in the middle of um, one side and on the end of the other. And then we'll do the same thing for the middle section. We're going to set the end point to zero. You can see the green set it to zero. And then again, the midpoint to zero as well. So now it's perfectly aligned. Now we'll duplicate that front piece, mirror it, and move it to the other end. And again, using the ruler first, we're going to line up this end section with the midpoint right here. And then check the length of the middle section. And we'll change it to a whole number, 120. And then we're going to select that back section and make sure that it measures 120 millimeters from the origin. So that's also perfectly aligned. We'll combine it all and move on. Now, when you look at this slime, there's two distinct waves. There's the wave on the bottom and the wave in the middle. There's about seven waves, I think, on the very bottom. And we're just gonna use the scribble section. So we'll freehand a wave and then scale it so that it looks right. That looks good. So let's move on to the second wave. And I think we're gonna use the same shape. There's one, two, three, there's four waves. So we we'll use that same wave and just stretch it. So only four of the waves occur right above it, like that. Now this is another trick that I like to use. We want to split this shape, but there's no good tool to do that with. So what we're gonna do is duplicate this red shape leave it selected, and then group it with the bottom wave. So the result will be two pieces, the original untouched shape and then this top piece. Now the lazy way to make a two color shape is to change the top one, leave the bottom one, and you're done. But once you group it, even if you hit multicolor, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't work. So we're gonna use the same trick that we used on the bottom. We're gonna duplicate the top shape, turn it into a hole, and cut that out of the bottom shape. So when we do that, we get this. And it's two distinct shapes split. Oh no, I made a, there's a, there's a gap. This will reveal any mistakes you make, so be better than me when you make yours. But we can just combine these and it'll stay hidden. Now let's align it, scale it, and make sure everything lines up, and then we'll move on to the eye stalks. And we're gonna make the eye stalks with the same revolve technique that we used earlier. So we'll take a round roof, and I'm gonna spend some time trying to line everything up, trying, trying to make sure that it's all uh, aligned well. Once I'm happy with the position, I'm going to group them together, revolve them 10 degrees, and then duplicate over, 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 and over. We'll group all of this, and we should have a nice looking eye stalk. Okay, that looks great. So let's move it over into position.
Okay, next is the eyeball, and that looks like a pretty appropriately sized eyeball. So now to get the different colors of the eye, we're gonna use this cylinder. We'll get it into position and then check the scale of it as well. And once we like that, we're gonna duplicate it and then make it smaller for the black portion of the eye. So now to make it look like an eye, we need to cut away everything that is not that, that sphere. So we're gonna make a sphere whole, the same size as the eye, group that together with a normal sphere, and then make that a hole. So that will allow us to cut away everything that is not the sphere. And we're gonna do this one at a time. We're, we're first gonna do the red and then we'll do the black. And since the position of the eye is in a place we like, when we align these, we first click on the eye to show that the alignment is in relation to that eye. So when you click on it, it aligns everything to that part. We're gonna duplicate this cutout for the black part and then we'll combine everything and make it multicolored. And then it's the exact same process for the black part. Again, when we align, you click on the sphere first and then you align and it aligns it to the sphere. We're gonna do the same thing with this. When we align it, we click on the sphere first and then align everything else. And that should be it. We'll make sure the position of his eyes in the right position, and then we'll duplicate it. Then we'll move around the eyes to make it look right, and there we have it, Gary the Snail. Yeah. <laughs>